All right, now we're talking about 7B. And in this section, we're going to learn how to build our own truth tables in order to determine the truth values of compound statements. Now, when you build a truth table, you always follow the same pattern. And what the truth table does and what the pattern does is it guarantees that you are getting all the possible combinations of the truth values of simple statements. And you're laying them out in a systematic order. Uh, it's the same way every time so that we can like refer to the lines of the truth table. We all know what each other is talking about. So when you're going to build a truth table, and um, let's say you've got some compound statement, some compound proposition. The first question you're going to ask is, how many horizontal lines am I going to need on this truth table? How, how long is it going to be? And there's a formula that tells you that. The number of lines that you're going to need on the truth table, the number of horizontal lines, is 2 raised to the power of n. And what's n? n is the number of simple statements, uh, the number of simple propositions in the statement. So, for example, let's look at this one. You've got not, it's not the case that P and Q or Q. How many simple statements are there? Count up how many different capital letters there are. You've got P and you've got Q. So that means you've got two capital letters, two simple statements. So how many lines will you need in this truth table? Two raised to the power of two. That is two times two, which equals four. What about in this one where it's not the case that P and Q or R? Now in that case, you've got three capital letters. Three simple statements. So how many lines will you need on the truth table? Two raised to the third power. Two times two times two, which equals eight. So that's the formula. Now, how do you build the truth table? Um, here's what you're going to do. On the, you're going to make like a T. And on the left side, you're going to make one column for each of the simple statements. Um, so in this way, you make just one column for each simple statement, no matter how many times that simple statement reoccurs in the compound statement. So in this one, you've got, it's not the case that P and Q or Q. It's like Q happens twice. Do I need two Q columns? No, you just need one Q column. So you've got a column for P and a column for Q. Now, you know that we did our formula, so you know you're going to need four lines for this one. So... How do you lay out, the first thing you want to do is you want to lay out the truth values, the truth value combinations on the, the left-hand side. So start with the column that's closest to the, the middle bar here. Start with the Q column in this case. And you want to go every other line. You want to go true, false, true, false. And then you want to go over to the next one and you want to double that, like two trues, two falses, two trues, two falses. If there was a third column here, uh, farthest to the left, you'd be like four trues, four falses, um, and, and so on. You're, you're going to follow that pattern. And what that does for you is it gives you every possible combination of, of the truth values of P and Q. So the next thing we want to do is we want to determine the truth values of the compound statement. And, and we do this logical operator by logical operator. And that you, got, you need to follow the certain order of operations. You're going to get to the main operator and its truth value last. That's the last step. Here's a tip for you. If there are parentheses in your compound statement that you're dealing with, you want to start with a logical operator that's as, that is as far inside the parentheses as possible, and then you work your way out. You start with the logical operators that range over only other simple statements, and then you work your way out to logical operators that range over other compound statements that are bigger and bigger until you get to the logical operator, which ranges over the entire compound statement. That's what we're doing. So in this case, we're going to start with the dot. It's all the way inside the parentheses, and it only is bring, ranging over P and Q, which means it's only ranging over other simple statements. So um, line one, we know that P is true and Q is true, so P and Q is true. The dot is true. 
line two, P is true and Q is false. Well, that means the conjunction is false because they're not both true. And the same goes for line three because it's a false and true, so it's false. And line four, false, false makes false. Next, we're going to move over to the tilde. Now, why are we doing the tilde but um, not the wedge? Well, think about it. I don't know whether this whole compound statement is true yet, so I can't determine whether or not the wedge, which ranges over it, is true, true yet or not. So um, in this case, here's how we go. This negation is saying it's not the case that all the stuff in parentheses. So if all the stuff in parentheses, look at line one here, is true, if the conjunction is true, then not the negation of it is going to be false. And this is just a matter of the truth table definition of the negation sign. On the other hand, if, if the stuff in parentheses is false, like on line two, then the negation is true, and so forth on line three and line four. So now we've got the truth values for this whole compound statement. It's not the case that P and Q. And now we're in a position to determine the truth value of the wedge because we know the truth values of the Q and of this whole compound statement. So I'm looking at here, to determine the truth value of the OR, I'm looking at the truth value under the, the tilde and the truth value under the Q. So for a wedge, at least one of the disjuncts has to be true in order to make the wedge true, okay? So Q is true, there's one, so I know on line one, the wedge is true. Uh, line two, Q is false, but um, this compound statement under, under the negation sign is true. So I'm good. I've got one that's true, so therefore line two is true. Line three, Q is true and the tilde is true, so true. And line four, Q is false, but tilde is true, so therefore the wedge is true. In other words, so here are the truth values. The possible truth values of this entire compound statement. They're under the column, uh, uh, under the main operator of the whole compound statement. That's what we're going for. So, so in this example, you've got P or if Q, then not P. Now, how many simple statements do you have? Two. How many lines are going to be on this truth table? Four. That comes from your formula. So you're going to go um, true, false, true, false, like this, and then true, true, false, false. That's how we get the, the truth values of the P and Q. Now, what's the order of operations we're going to follow? Well, we're going to go as far inside the parentheses as we can. And we've got a horseshoe and we've got a tilde. Which one should we do first? Tilde, because the tilde ranges only over a simple statement P. But the horseshoe is ranging over a compound statement, not P. So we have to do the, the tilde first. So on line one, P is true, so not P is going to be false. Uh, line two, P is true, so not P will be false. Line three, uh, P is false, not P will be true. Line four, P is false, not P will be true. Now we are in a position to determine the horseshoe. So we know line one, Q is true, but not P is false. That means that the horseshoe is false. Now, if you're not sure about why that is, go back and look at your truth table definition of the horseshoe. Um, line two, uh, the Q is false. The antecedent is false. Now, without even looking at the truth value of the consequent, I know the horseshoe is going to be true because whenever the antecedent is false, horseshoe is true. So I know line two is true. Line three, Q is true. And not, not P, the antecedent is true. So we're good to go. That's true. True, true is true with the horseshoe. Line four, Q is false. So I know already automatically the horseshoe is going to be true. All right. Now I've got um, the, the truth value of this entire compound statement inside parentheses, and I've got the truth value of P already. So now I can determine the truth values of the whole compound statement uh, determined by the main operator here, the wedge. So remember, a wedge is true if at least one of the disjuncts is true.
So first, I know P on line one is true, so it's got to be true. Uh, P on line two is true, so wedge is true. P on line three is false, but good news, uh, the, the other disjunct under the horseshoe is true. So I'm still true. And the same is the case on line four. So again, uh, it's always true. Uh, this one's true under all circumstances. I know I went fast on those. You're going to have to um, work through some examples to get this basic pattern in your head, but there's, there's a start for you.